Hello, everybody. Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, here to react to the Raptors' 98 to 106 loss to the Washington Wizards. Game four. We're sorry for the late upload. I was on a plane. Rikers going through exams. Messy time of year. Messy game. Riker. I I only caught the first half of this game. You saw the whole thing. What What were your overall thoughts on this? Yeah. Just um, hurtful game. Devastating game. Um. I don't know. It's just my comments about the game made it seem like I completely lost hope for the Raptors in this series. That's not the case. It was mm-hmm. an exciting game till the very end, yeah. right through till the very last seconds of the game, because mm-hmm. neither team managed to get a sizable lead. It was back and forth. There were mm-hmm. foul calls and ones, trick shots. Yeah. As a fan, it's, one, it's exciting it, to watch. It's just disappointing yeah. when you lose in the fashion that we did, given we lost because of the same reason that we lost last year, the year before, and the year prior to that. The same thing that we've been working all season to fix, and it's the culture reset. And we reverted back to isolation offense and turnover heavy mm-hmm. basketball. No passing especially down the stretch of this game down the stretch yeah and it wasn't throughout the entire game it was only in the last five minutes Mm -hmm. of the game when after bow after sorry bradley beal got fouled out which to me is the most surprising thing given he was six or six or seven from ten from the three-point line 28 points at the time he was the reason that their offense was catching up him and Otto porter kept hitting shots it was them Mm -hmm. two that were keeping them in the game he got fouled out i thought oh wow i mean we're gonna run away with it now yeah easy win yeah but then for whatever reason six or seven possess- possessions in a row to DeMar DeRozan, waited till the very end of the shot clock, forced a bad shot, and then they ran the fast break two-on-one against DeLon Wright, it seemed, every time. And, I mean, there's not a lot he can do. He's not, you yeah. know, he's long. He's not amazing. I mean, there's nobody well, that, he, he, nothing that anybody can do in a two-on-one. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Like, the, they were running this ISO offense. DeLon was the only safety for the, the defense. And, obviously, if it's a fast break with your point guard or – I guess he's running two two guard with Lowry on the floor. He's not going to be able to stop a John Wall led fast break. But you mentioned Demar, right? So the, I, as I said, I only saw the first half. They were moving the ball. The team, the offense looked great. Demar had thirty five points, but on ten of twenty nine shooting. So that's that's a pretty pretty bad field goal ratio there. What? How did Demar look down the stretch? Yeah, it was a bad shooting night for DeMar and he tried to shoot his way out of it to be fair best player mm-hmm. and he, he assumed that he was going to eventually make his shots and there was a lot of shots down the stretch yeah. little floaters his normal like he gets past his man and he sort of keeps him on his back you know he, he does the yep. he gets past him does a crossover to get in front and just stays there and does, does a little floater classic DeMar move those weren't falling mm-hmm. from about yeah. five ten feet which is surprising but he said himself in the but last he can't he can't he can't force those shots when the shot isn't cooking you get you break out of that slump by moving it and getting the ball back within the flow of the o- offense. Well, that's exactly and, it. And he said in the last yeah. in the last uh, post game conference with him and Kyle, Neil and Morpheus, mm-hmm. that Kyle <laughs> was roasting him. He was like, "Oh yeah," because Demar said, "I don't need to go out, or I don't go out and try to score 30, 40 points." And then Kyle was like, "You mm-hmm. just score thirty points. What are you saying?" But yeah. Demar's point in that game was that they don't need thirty points for, from him to win. But he was playing this game, well, he, shooting 29 shots, as if he yep. needed to score to 30 points, which contradicted himself, yeah, right? Exactly. Because if you look at the comparison from DeMar this game to Game 2, he got 37 points because the Wizards saw that Game 1. Toronto, they, the, the Raptors just made Serge Ibaka, OG, everyone else beat him because they focused on DeMar and Lowry. The defense was on two of those guys. And the bench mob stepped up. The whole rest of the team stepped up. And then Game 2... They focused on everyone else, and then the shots were coming easy for Demar and Lowry. Yeah. So if they focus in on Demar uh, on our backcourt, then we have to get back to swinging the ball to Surge, swinging the ball to the the rest of the mob. And I know we're, we'll talk about how they just didn't aren't performing up to the standards. Uh, Yak played pretty well last night, but the rest really didn't step up too much. Oh, you can disagree, but. We we well, need it's, it's hard to get the opportunity from the whole team. We do, and it's hard yeah. to get the opportunity to step up. And this is the same issue that I have the criticism that I have of LeBron James that I get roasted for a lot when I voice it is that, mm-hmm. you know, he can be dominant, and he sort of needs to, I guess, with the the team that he has. Yeah. But I mean, if he's yep. shooting twenty thirty shots a night, and the second 
player, the second most shots from any other player is only 5-6. I mean, how can you reasonably say his team is letting him down if his team isn't getting the opportunity to play? And that's the same thing tonight besides Kyle Lowry, right? Serge only had five mm-hmm. shots. Jonas only had six. Yak only had yeah. six. CJ only had four shots total, only three threes. Yeah. I mean, no, he wasn't terribly efficient, but the point is, it's exactly what you were saying. There needs to be more confidence in the team, and I'm, I'm surprised yeah. that that wasn't there this game because, I mean... The bench has been has has won games in the fourth quarter with oh, clutch 100%. shots, yeah. right? So I don't understand yeah. why the why a, a, a fourth game playoff is any different. Why you know they there would be an issue with trust and Demar would want to be selfish. I don't know. I, I, I I'm just kind of yeah, it's, I'm a little confused. Yeah, we're 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 shell shocked as Raptors fans. It's it's just weird to see how good the rest of our team has been, and then in a huge game, a game because if we realistically if we won this game the wizards are going to be demoralized for game five coming up to toronto well we get this game this series in five yeah but no now it's tied and so tonight was to earn respect from the nba last night was a must win for the toronto raptors yeah it was because we aren't playing to win this second round first round series obviously we need to and it's not a given that we're going to win this series even though i believe that both of both of us think we will get this win mm-hmm would you agree? I agree. I I don't think we'll lose yeah. at home. Yeah. Yeah. So so we both think we're going to win this series. We're not worried about that. But with how well we played this season, we should be looking past the first round. We shouldn't be in a six seven game series with the Washington Wizards. The the Washington Wizards from this season. Obviously, they have they're more talented than a regular eighth seed. But we had them shell shocked. We had them bamboozled the first couple of games. And if we just kept our foot on the gas, it would have been a sweep. It would have been a five-game series. But we had to drop that game, game three. My reaction to that, it was, you know, it was just a huge mess. Yeah. Mess of now, a game. We had no chance of winning that. But to tonight, give, to we give had credit, a chance though, of winning. To give credit where mm-hmm. credit's due, and this is what people have been saying, that the Wizards, had John Wall not been injured for a couple of months this season, they wouldn't mm-hmm. be eighth seed. And like I said, to give credit where credit's due, it was Wall and Beal. That won yeah. that game last night, and Otto Porter, I guess, and Mike Scott. Um, but it was it was mainly Beal, Beal and Wall. And people say, yeah, yeah, well, you know, when they're playing at, at top performance, they are a top team, which is fair. Yeah. But but the thing is, the reason the Wizards haven't been good this season is because of confidence, or it's been because even before Wall went out, they were seventh, sixth seed. They, it's not like they were you know competing with us for a top three three seed yeah. while Wall was playing they were they were struggling the whole year now obviously it got worse when Wall was out and they wouldn't have been eighth maybe you know stayed around the middle of the pack but the reason they've been struggling this season is because they just it's been well noted they don't have team chemistry they get frustrated at each other we saw that you know infamous picture of John Wall and Gortat arguing on the bench with Beal with the towel over his head it's just it we gotta we gotta keep the foot on the gas that was the thing we had to do we had to make sure the Wizards stayed shell-shocked and couldn't play at this level. Didn't give them the confidence to be the Wizards of last season. So now we got a, we got a tough series on our hands, and you know, we're the first seed. We shouldn't be dealing with this. Yep. No, no that's totally true. All right. Mm-hmm. Keep it short. Let, let us know what you guys think about this. You know, yep. Wizards fans, I'm sure you guys think it's definitely um, due process that you guys win a couple of games. I'm sure that the Wizards fans are feeling like they should probably win the series. I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Raptors fans, what? Yeah. Pro- the majority of people will probably watch this video. You know, what do you think about last night's loss and moving forward? But let's yeah. get into a couple it's of a, the. It's a blessing in disguise that the Pacers are holding up with LeBron right now. Oh man! Because yeah, we wouldn't hear the end of it. Th- yeah, we would not hear the end of it. We're lucky from the national media because we be we be called and the Blazers. Like I personally, I love Damian Lillard. I think he's a great player. But the fact that their storylines are taking over, that they're the trap, trash, new trash bros or whatever, and LeBron's struggling, mm-hmm. the fact that that's overshining us is kind of a blessing for the Raptors. But yeah, we'll go, we'll go straight into the segments tonight. The play of the day goes in the first half. I think we both agree on the play of the day. Yep. On a lighter note, because we've been kind of sad about this game for the last ten minutes. But the play of the day, to go play of the day, goes to the Wizards were on a fast break. DeLon Wright got back, played. De- John Wall tried to do one of his classic behind the back layups, his athletic moves. DeLon swatted that, got that out of there. 
And I'm not sure what other player Siakam. got the ball back. Yeah, well, Siakam got the meanest swat. Second, so back-to-back blocks on the defensive possession. Comes down. Siakam throws down a mean dunk. It was a very exciting play. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Love it. But I was screaming around that Montreal airport. It was a, it was a scene. <laughs> yeah, that was certainly one that I mean, there was a lot of plays like that throughout the night. Though there was a lot mm-hmm. of and ones. Yeah. it was fun. It was a fun game. But uh, yeah, you know, well, not this all... this was a... yeah. Go yeah, on. you started the pot off. This was an exciting game, and if we won, it would have been very you know it wins a win. We would have been pretty hyped that we won this game. Yeah, but you know these ones are the tougher tougher to lose. Yeah, like I said, circumstantially, but not mm-hmm. all plays can be. The play of the day. The de goat play. Some of them make you say, oh, jeez. Brings us into the oh, jeez play of the day. I don't know. I'm Like you said, you've said it a couple times, this pod, bamboozled. Um, perhaps, uh, I don't know, if we're looking towards a specific play, John Wal- or Bradley Beal getting fouled out. Mm-hmm. And then us not being There's able a, to well, us not being able to capitalize on that. That would be my OGs. But like yeah. looking towards yeah. a specific play, I, I I don't know. Like all every ISO ball possession mm-hmm. towards the yeah. end. I know people were complaining reading through Twitter. I know people were complaining about the refs a lot. But if we're playing ISO ball and all that, that that makes you say OGs oh, as a Raptors fan. The refs, you can't blame it on the refs if we were reverting back to gross 2015 basketball. Yeah, and Just the, a, the referee the... OGs oh, fourth quarter. I, I like to try to watch the games as unbiased as possible, not from mm-hmm. a perspective of who I'm cheering for, but just when I'm looking yeah. really, yeah, at, at the referee like calls. calls and exactly. all that Exactly, and it seemed to be pretty even. And now the mm-hmm. argument with any sort of refing is not that they're making the right or wrong calls, it's just that they're even, right? The refs yeah. could make yeah, bad sure. calls all game, but as long as they're making bad calls against each team, then normally there's not as many mm-hmm. complaints. And I think that they did a pretty yeah. good job. And if there was a missed call on one side, a missed call on the seconds on the other side as well. Yeah. So I, I don't think yeah, we can't blame it. this game on referees. It, it's but I saw ball. It's that's the issue. I saw ball and turnovers and three point defense. That was the one key that we mm-hmm. didn't get into. They they killed us in the yeah. in the three point ball. But um, Demari Carroll Gold Star Award. Who <laughs> pretty obvious to me. Who would you give it to? Uh, well, if you got it pretty obvious to let us know. Oh, me, okay. DeMar DeRozan. Um, hate to say it. DeMar? Yeah, especially yeah. from a guy that w- really did Dropped a great 35. job. 35. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it's the ISO ball, man. That's what we don't need from him. Yeah. That's the one thing we don't need. We want mm-hmm. mid-season DeMar where he's averaging like eight assists a game and yeah. still getting those 20, 30 points. Yeah. I don't want to see 35 it's, points on 29. That's a Kobe Bryant game. Late career yeah. Kobe well, Bryant. He had, he, yeah, he had six assists. Like, DeMar in the first half was ridiculous. He got to the rim. The Wizards weren't, you know, because they were focusing on the whole team. DeMar was in attack mode, and you love to see that. But I, I am assuming they just adjusted in the second half and just made it a mess for the team. So I could see, definitely agree with you there. And no one else really got enough shots to have the DeMar Carroll Gold Star Award tonight. Maybe CJ Miles. You want him to hit his open threes. He went 0 for 3 tonight. From the three point line, but the past two games, CJ Miles could get at both games. So we'll give it to DeMar tonight. One other last note I want to get your thoughts on. Yep. With Fred out, right? I We haven't really been talking about Fred because that's, you know, we don't, we're trying not to think about how painful it is to see him on the bench. He's looking stylish, but he's obviously hurt with that shoulder injury. The yeah. Raptors are keeping it kind of on the down low how long he's going to be out. They've been saying day to day for the past week and a half. So, but they cut, they short the bench. No Norm, no Bebe, and obviously no Lorenzo Brown, who, when one of the point guards were injured, he usually stepped in. So, would you like to see more Norm or Bebe or even Alfonso McKinney just, just to keep that 10 man rotation? Or are you yeah, happy? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I love the DeLon 10 man right I love the 10 20. rotation. I don't question Dwayne Casey. Mm-hmm. He's been great all season with um, understanding yeah. lineups, but I think that there's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's something special about the Raptors team and being able to have so much depth. And I think we're really mm-hmm. we're taking away from what makes this team so great and what has been the key to their success by not playing Norm God, who's you know normally terrific in playoffs. Yeah, Jakob Pertle fouled out, right? Both him and mm-hmm. JV in the second uh, half had four fouls. They could have put Bebe in, right? Bebe has been terrific yeah. every time he goes out. So mm-hmm. I, I would yeah, like well, to see he's the a guys bit play. Game three, but. 
I mean, but listen, if you're giving yeah, somebody... He's still, he's still a good player. It's you the can't playoffs. Take him out There's so game. much intensity yeah. in the playoffs. You know, and yeah. you, if you're only given limited minutes, of course they're going to be a little bit nervous. So I'd like to see more 100%. guys play. But it's, you know... I, and the Wizards, the Wizards actually ran more players than the Raptors tonight. They they ran 10 men. Raptors only ran my, 9. So that's something interesting to see. Obviously, we, Dwayne Casey has proven himself to be... We have to have trust in Dwayne Casey's decision-making, but... Just an interesting look. Something to look at for the rest of the series. Let us know what you guys think. Hurtful playoff loss. It was an exciting game, but obviously exciting games only make it worse when you lose. So, obviously, let us know what you guys think. We'll have a review coming out for game five, which will be at home for the Raptors. Uh, You guys are the best. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all those, all of our social media platforms. We're covering the Raptors 24-7. You guys are the best. Riker, any last words? Nope. Thanks for listening.